playing really well, and, and we knew we were going to be in for a fight, and and you know they they did what nobody did to us all year. They just after about the first possession said we're going to play zone, and and it slowed the game down. I thought my kids handled it well. Uh, when we got down eight or nine, we fought back, we tied the game, then they made a play and we didn't. But I, 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 again, I give them credit. They deserve to be playing tomorrow and, and uh, that's a credit to Lavelle and, and his players. Thank you. At this time, we'll open for questions for both our student and the coach. Please state your name and affiliation as a courtesy. Coach, Joey Shinsky with the Verizon League. Uh, what was it about uh, the way the game was going tonight that prevented Odiasi from having the impact he, he usually has on the game? Well, I, I think one, every time the shot went up, they, they, were, they were making sure they hit him and, and he couldn't get his hands on any balls. Um, and, and again, when you, when you get compacted in that zone, then it, there just wasn't any room for him to operate. And I'll probably look back at the film and, and feel like we didn't get it in there some, but yet I thought the guards were trying to. And, and the second half, he got a few more touches, and, but I thought Clint Robinson really came in and played well and got some big rebounds. And, and um, you know, so it, it was kind of, it, it's what I'm trying to build in this program. It's about having depth. Uh, where if one guy isn't on, another guy can step in, and I thought Clint really did that tonight for us. Mike Pankow, UICFlamesBasketball.com. Uh, Dom, um, what does the uh, zone defense in Milwaukee do to kind of frustrate you guys, and then what do you, do you guys have to do better to attack that zone? Um, well, we, usually, we wasn't used to them being in zone like that all the time. Last time we played, they were in a lot. But, you know, it kind of you know, took us out of our game a little bit, but the second half, we kind of, made up for it by attacking the basket, knocking down open shots and stuff. But, you know, we still play hard, you know, just to come out with the win. Coach Paul, on the Northwestern Union Times, what, I mean, putting the season in perspective, what do you take from it? You know, you're losing to Kembe and, and having a lot of freshmen, but somehow you're, you know, lost three teams left in the conference tournament. Well, I'm proud of, of the kids, and, 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 and I guess I got to quit calling them kids, but uh, we were like a group of young kids. And, and you know what? We made a lot of growth. Uh, you, you look through our game notes, and, and we're the second youngest team in the country. Uh, we're one of the most improved teams in the country. At the last time, I think we were 11. Um, I feel good about it. And as I told the guys as I was leaving the locker room, you know, my goal when I came here 18 months ago was to make UIC basketball relevant again. It, I felt like when I got here and even going through the league last year, that it, somewhere the tradition and the success UIC had had in the past, nobody, nobody, nobody even cared about it anymore. And, and you know what, it's like the students we had here at the game, uh, the support we've gotten, I, I think we made a, a, a big stride in year two and, and again dealt with the injuries and our guys never used it as an excuse and, and I, I knew what we were all year and, and, and I'm really proud of this group. Will we have any more questions for our student? Yeah, Dom, um, looking at next year, I know it's been only 20 minutes after the game ended, but uh, looking at next year, what do you think of the, the team coming back? Uh, next year, you know, I think we're going to have a great group of guys again next year. You know, we got a recruit named Greg coming in. Also, he's a great player, a rebounding type guy, too. So he's going to add a lot of depth for us also. But, you know, we got a lot of great young guys. But like Coach said, next year, they're not going to be looking at us as young guys anymore. So we're going to do what we have to do next year. Thank you, John. You're all set for this evening. Coach, um, let's see here. Kind of lost train of my thought there for a second. Um, <laughs> when, when the game was tied at 63 um, and then um, Haas got that open three, uh, what were you thinking? What, what happened to that, for that play to break down? Well, Godwin went with the big and, and should know. And, and, but, but again, they were playing hard. And, 
and the ball comes off and, and he's out there for a three and uh, again the odds say if Haas shoots that three it's coming off and and he buried it and that's kind of the role Milwaukee's on right now and and you know they're creating that though I'm not saying they're not they're creating that but you know I it just it's one of those plays that happens and you know we come out of the timeout and we get an illegal screen um, you know, I just did tough plays, but uh, again, I give the Milwaukee kids credit. They made the plays when they had to. Coach, uh, Coach Brandon last night after this game asked about some of the upsets in the tournament, and he said that, you know, with the route robin and the familiarity, that maybe the media looks at it as upsets, but the coaches don't really look at it as such. I mean, just your take on how this tournament unfolded and and, and the parity and, and you know, you guys beat Green Bay and Valpo and Open Fall and all that. Well, I, I think this. I, I think, you know, as I said the other night when we were done playing, it was so funny to, that teams had already played two games and we hadn't even played yet. And, and then the team we we're playing tonight had a day off. You know, and, and so I, I think, but I, I do believe tournaments are about upsets. And, and I don't think anybody could say those first two weren't upsets. I, we all know how good Oakland is. We, we know it, I know how it went down, but Hamrick, Walker, it, Valpo's got a very good team, and, and the Valpo program has been built on being a team. I, I don't think Matt would have ever said their team was built on Alec Peters. He, he was a really big key, but, and, and yet, I, I think the hard part is, and, and people will debate the format again. I, you know what? At the, the bottom line is this time of year, you've got to line up and play. And there is familiarity in this league. And, and uh, you know what? Give the coaches credit. I, I think you've got a group of coaches that really prepare their teams and, and try to find weaknesses. And, and so, I, I think the other thing is when you have change like has happened in our league, with myself and John coming in and being in our second year in Link, and, and Lavelle coming in, and, and it, the Links kind of took a different look. And so, and with Matt taking over at Valpo, you know, Campy's the old man now. And, and you know, and Jerry, but, and, and Gary Watts, but, uh, over half the league's kind of new, and I think it's I think it's been a positive thing for the league. I I, I can tell you this: I, I see a group of, group of coaches that are really committed to making Horizon League basketball go to a different level. And and so sometimes during the year when people went, well, I don't know how good it is. I don't know how good Youngstown, Milwaukee is. What I saw is every night you went out, well coached teams with with kids that play really hard. And I, you've covered this league longer than I've been in it. Because all I heard before I got here was that like most years, one and two are really good and three, four maybe, and then the bottom, nobody really worried about. It. Well, the league showed all year. You know, Youngstown won at Green Bay. You know, there were games all over the place that showed when we got to Detroit, it was going to be anybody's tournament. Thank you, Coach. That'll conclude our conference this evening.